Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a saw made from a little company out of Germany. I don't even know what model this thing. I guess it doesn't really matter. They're, uh, as long as I can get parts, it's all good. So the complaint was that the saw wouldn't, wouldn't run right, wouldn't rev up. It might not have even started. I don't remember. So not shown in the video is I did look at the piston and cylinder and they're in good shape so we're gonna move forward with the repair on this uh, the next step I usually do is to pressure test the fuel line especially on these models I need that blue green red Loctite you got which one's the strongest the red, red. one red means you're dead yeah, I just used it today. It should be... Just used it today on what? A f***ing chainsaw. <laughs> Damn, you're going to see it again, right? It was a craftsman. I had to do everything I could to keep it together. So now that we determined what the problem is, and if you didn't catch that, I tried to pump 10 pounds of pressure into the fuel line at the fuel filter, and it wouldn't hold. I bled down right away so that tells me that either the line is cracked or there's a problem in the carburetor and on this model saw it's almost always that the line is cracked so we're going to start pulling things apart here try and keep things as clean as I can keep the dirt out of the engine So take a look at this uh, fuel line right here. It might be hard to tell in this video. And you'll get another look at it later. But that line is cracked really bad. This is our choke rod. We'll get that out of the way. Then we're going to pop our throttle linkage off the trigger lever. And it's just kind of pushed up into the linkage on the carburetor so it pops right off of there. And this cross shaft right here, which includes the kill switch and uh, I guess the, uh, what, did, what would that be? Part of that weird ass switch that Steele's got on this saw. Uh, so we're going to speed things up here a little bit because if you've been watching any of these over the bench videos, you've watched me rebuild a carb before. And actually, we're not really getting into this thing here. I'm just putting new uh, pump and meter pump, a new pump diaphragm gasket and a metering diaphragm gasket, just to freshen it up. I really had no reason to believe that the carb was gummed up in any way. It was just a case of an old fuel line on this one. So I probably should have sped this up into like quadruple time or something because I'm even getting bored watching this here. But we're almost done with the carb rebuild and we'll put this thing back together and see if it runs. Okay, now we want to pull the old fuel line out of the top of the tank. It's just a press fit preformed fuel line that's press fit into the about a half inch diameter hole in the tank. Kind of clean the dirt off of the top of it. So uh, check out this fuel line. So that's the part that's above the out of the fuel and the stretchy part here is the part that was in the fuel. So I don't know if it's from heat, uh, 
exposure to air. I don't know what it is. The damn line rotted. So we're going to put a fresh fuel line in there. I need a reason to hit this BS button. You know, I should, probably should have hit it back when we were all sitting around watching that boring ass carb rebuild. Of course, I could hit it because steel makes these fuel lines just barely long enough to stretch them and get the fuel filter out of the tank. Actually, that's my biggest gripe. If there was a DEFCON 6, that would qualify. Some of them you can't even get the filter out without getting in there with two hemostats. You gotta pull them out through the top of the tank to service them. Anyway, I'm done whining. We're gonna put our fuel line back on the carburetor. Just like that. And then, uh, what's next? It looks like I'm thinking about it. We'll put this cross shaft back on there. You see where I'm lifting up that metal spring? That's part of the stop switch. A lot of guys just jam this rod in there, and they, that spring ends up underneath that rod. Then they can't figure out why the thing won't shut off. So you got to make sure that's uh, in the right position when you put that cross shaft back in there. Then our throttle, throttle lever goes back in place. And it's just a snap fit into the top of the trigger lever. Good job for a straight bladed scrunch. Now our choke lever goes back on. There's a hole in the center of that cross shaft. And then a slot on the choke linkage. And what's required is that you just slap it together. Like that. Little function check there. It looks like everything works all right. Clean up our air box a little bit and then we'll bolt that in place. This bolt, I think, is uh, three quarters of an ugga dugga. Click right there. Click. Snap our air filter back in place. This is really easy working on these particular models. That uh, fuel filter holes is probably the worst part. Need a little bit of fresh go-go juice in there. Man, I hate these old flip-style steel caps. They are a pain in the ass. You wouldn't believe how many people bring me in chainsaws with oil leaks that are just that damn flip cap. It's a problem. So that's really all I got for you on the steel fuel line repair. Thanks for watching. Later.